did is I put together a little bit of a slideshow. I work at a physical therapy clinic in Santa Monica, and this is the exact slideshow that I show my own clients, and it works very well with them. I don't know about you, but I'm a very visual learner. People can't talk to me, and I just get it. I need pictures, I need to understand, I need to be more hands-on. So this is what I find worked for me, and this works for my clients as well. So basically what we're going to talk about today is a few different things. We're going to talk about how the body works when we eat. Because that's really what we want, right? We want more energy. We want to feel good. So we're going to talk about food versus energy and also how food affects our joints, our shoulders, and our knees, and our back. We're going to talk about the side effects of what happens when you eat well and what happens when you don't eat so well. We're going to figure out where do we start? We can do all this talking, but how can we actually put it into action? And then we're going to figure out how to plan for the day. So the best idea I like to use is to think of our body as a machine, right? It's got gears. And our body, the gears, they need to be strong. The pipes need to be clean in order for it to work, in order for the machine to run correctly, just like a car, just like a kitchen sink. It can't be all clogged or else the water won't be able to move through it, right? The car needs to be able to run or else it won't be able to drive. So I like to think of our body like a set of gears. And if we work those gears correctly, they will just keep moving. And that's kind of like our metabolism. If our gears in our body are moving strong and moving correctly, then we're gonna have more energy because the gears are constantly flowing. If we start to eat foods that really aren't helping the metabolism, the gears kind of stop like this. And this is when we feel sluggish. So let's talk about high water content versus low water content foods. Also being bus drivers, you guys can't really drink water all day, right? I was just talking with Kimberly about that because you can't just pull over and stop the bus constantly, right? So if you're not drinking water during the day, we need to find a way to get you guys water somehow. The body is 70% water, so we should be feeding it water. Fruits and vegetables have very high water content. Think about a watermelon or an apple. Even cucumbers or tomatoes, they're very juicy when you bite into them. Meat, eggs, um, any animal product really, dairy, cheese, bread, grains, that's low water content. You don't see a slice of bread and think, oh, that's so juicy and watery, right? Um, so you want to definitely have high water content foods. That's going to help the gears move, right? So you think about foods that are driving the metabolism. You want to lubricate the gears just like you do in the sink, just like you do in the car. So high water content foods are going to lubricate those gears because that's going to keep the gears moving. It's going to drive a fast metabolism. It's going to give you more energy. Low water content foods are just going to kind of get stuck in the gears. Think about a slice of bread going through those gears there. Is that going to move the gears pretty well? No, it's probably just going to kind of eh, 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 try to get through it. So this is going to slow down the metabolism, it's going to slow down our energy. That's when people start to feel sluggish. This is a really great picture, I love it. It's two men side by side, one with clean gears and one with rusty gears. Let's talk about the guy on the right. Not only are his gears clean, but he's only got one guy really working on him. He's got two guys kind of overseeing the plans, but he's also carrying an apple and a weight. You can see that he's a little bit more slender. On the left, you see a guy who's holding a burger and fries. His gears are rusty. He's got a little bit more fat in the stomach area, and he's got a lot of guys working on the pipes over there, right? It doesn't look too good. you got to think about what's going on inside of us. We look in the mirror, and we see our face. We see what our, we look like with clothes on. But it's really hard to really think about what our body looks like on the inside. And we don't really want to think about that all the time, because we don't always have to see it. But if we saw that more, we'd probably be eating a lot better. So the foods that we eat directly affect our energy levels, right? We just discussed that. And specific foods are going to drag you down, and other foods are really going to pull you up. Every time you eat something, you should look at your plate, and you need to ask yourself, what is this plate going to do for me? Am I going to eat this and feel really good, or am I going to eat this and want to go take a nap afterwards? Mm -hmm. There have been many times that I have gone out for Chinese or Italian or pizza, and I actually have to unbutton my pants when I get in the car because I'm so full. I am not ashamed to admit it, but I do that. And then an hour later, I go home and I eat my leftovers. How is that even possible, right? <laughs> we just ate so much. How are we still hungry an hour afterwards? 
It's because foods actually affect stimuli in our brains. Let's not talk about blood pressure and cholesterol. That stuff has been beaten to death. We don't need to talk about it. But let's talk about how foods actually affect our energy. The chemicals in foods really have an ability to hit the receptors in our brain and make us feel hungry when we're not, make us feel tired, and make us really unable to concentrate as much. That's a scary thing, right? It has that much control over us. So you want to look at your plate and you want to think, is this food going to make me want to go take a nap after? Or is this food going to help me feel me for my day? This is what food looks like in our stomach. The shape here is actually what the stomach looks like. So we've got 400 calories of different kinds of foods. The reason why this says 400 calories of oil is because oil is fat. If you look at the bottle of olive oil, they'll say about 14 grams of fat because that's all olive oil is. Um, when you eat chicken, this is Go ahead, you another go, you way to stay protein. And then 100 calories of vegetables. So when we eat certain foods, you notice how you eat something and you'll either feel really full or you'll eat something and you'll say, I need to eat more, right? Yeah. Usually when we eat something that's pretty fatty, we can eat a lot more of it, right? Let's talk about dessert. How come we can eat a whole thing of cake? and not feel that full as if we were to eat something like... Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ate a really large chicken salad or something, you're going to feel pretty full yeah. afterwards, right? Yeah. But you can eat a whole thing of cake because that's fat. So when you eat certain foods, you should know that when you're consuming it, when you're eating it, you can already know how you're going to feel afterwards. You're either going to feel full or you're going to be more hungry. So we were kind of talking about taking popcorn as a snack. I mean, it's it's a good snack and sometimes it's low calorie and you can get it without butter so it's fat free but how nutrient dense is it just look at it it's like this air pop thing how full is that going to keep you right the, these are graphs show our energy levels when we eat certain foods over here this is talking about foods that are going to release energy quickly this is going to be like a candy bar. So when you see kids on a sugar high and they crash later, or if you ever go to the park with kids, and you see them running around and you're like, oh my gosh, what did they have to eat today? And then you know that they're going to probably wreak havoc on their parents an hour later, and then they're going to go down and crash, right? Because our energy levels just go like this. They go up, and then they come down. They go up, and then they come down. Over on the left side, that's energy that's being released slowly over time. That's someone that's a little bit more mellow because they're not having those spike in sugar not having that spike in and just all that food coming into you at once and working right away. The goal is to have food that's going to keep us stable over time, that's going to hold us over. This is another graph. This is a little bit more visual. So this talks about your lunchtime, 12 o'clock right about now. If you see people that work at a desk job and that drink a lot of coffee, you can guarantee around 2, 3, 4 p.m. they're getting up to have another coffee or they're sleeping under their desk, right? <laughs> because they just had a lunch, like a sub sandwich and some chips and a candy bar and soda, and that's going to help them out for, you know, the next half hour, hour, right? And then what's going to happen, they're going to flatline and be cranky, moody, want another cup of coffee, want to go take a nap. That's not really going to help us through the day. And then we're going to get home, and if you didn't eat anything and you just had some Coke or coffee, you're going to just eat so much because you weren't feeling satisfied. Here, this is food that's going to keep us stable over time. A salad, some bean meat, some fruit and water, because it's kind of keeping us held over for a longer period of time. But any kind of teas, or is it... Because that one little round green one looks like it's tea, right? Well, tea has natural caffeine, caffeine in it. Right. Um, if you are eating enough fruits and vegetables, you probably aren't going to find yourself needing any caffeine. And I'll talk to you guys more about that in a little bit. So let's move a little bit away from energy and let's talk about how our body actually feels. Like our, our joints, right? Our shoulders, our knees. That's what's carrying us every day. Here is a picture of a guy who has his hands on his back, so he's got some back pain, and he's also carrying a little extra fat around his stomach. That is unfortunately where we all carry our extra weight. It goes around all of our organs. So this is talking about the liver, the kidney, the gallbladder, the colon. These are our organs, and what happens is when fat accumulates around the stomach, it's a specific fat, it's called visceral fat. So when people start to lose weight, they're gonna say, I'm losing weight everywhere except my stomach. That's because 
that fat is a different kind of fat, unfortunately. It's a little bit more stubborn and it's harder to get rid of. So it takes the longest to go away. Also having fat around all these organs and joints is really just painful on our body. How can the machine, like the shoulder work so much if I have a lot of fat around my arm? I can't throw a baseball as good. I can't drive my car as good. If I'm sitting at a desk all day and I've got all this fat around my midsection, standing up, leaning over, grabbing groceries, you know, getting dressed in the morning, that's all gonna be hard because I've got all this fat in the way of my muscles my machine, it needs to be working. Side effects of poor eating habits. This is a list. Low metabolism, so you gain some weight. You've got low energy, you're tired, you're sluggish. You've got joint pain. We don't really talk about it, but constipation is a really big thing. No one really wants to talk about it, but everyone is really thinking how they just don't go to the bathroom as much as they'd like. It does feel really good when you can go to the bathroom because that means you're releasing everything from your body. What you are eating should be also coming out. You should be going multiple times a day, at least once a day. Sometimes you don't go for you know, a couple of days at a time and you start to feel a lot worse. So think about the water soluble foods and lubricating the joints. If we're not getting those gears moving, everything's just gonna be stuck inside our stomach. We want it moving through and we want to release it. Headaches, allergies, moodiness, poor sleep. These are things that have just become way too common in life. If we're moody, if we didn't get enough sleep, if we have headache and allergies, it's like, oh yeah, I have allergies too, I have a headache too. You can talk to anyone here and they'll say they suffer from all these things. <laughs> these don't need to happen. We can have life without them. So when you start to eat better, your metabolism speeds up, the gears are in high motion, they're working for you, so you're losing weight, your energy is up, your digestion is better, you're going to the bathroom more frequently, so you are happier, because you're sleeping better and you're more confident. Okay, so where do we start? How do we move from here? I like to talk to my clients about just starting with one meal a day, because I think that's the easiest, and breakfast, is like we've heard since kindergarten the most important meal of the day right and just like we heard in kindergarten eat your fruits and veggies fruit is the best thing to feed your body it's been around since the beginning of time you don't need to cook it heat it freeze it microwave it anything there is nothing faster than fruit it's fast food this is what fast food really needs to be we need to change our definition of fast food and smoothies are a great way to do it. I was talking with Kimberly about it. We were trading recipes earlier, and I'm gonna do this more often over the next few days. When I'm coming back, I'm gonna bring more taste for you guys, some food to, for you guys to try that I make at home, things that are really easy, because we want it fast, and we want it to help us feel good, and we also want it to be working for us and be inexpensive, right? So I, I walk to work every day, or I ride my bike, I can't afford a car. Sometimes you guys might see me take the bus occasionally if I'm in a rush. But I have a backpack and I, like I said, you know, I'm, my, I live with my boyfriend. He doesn't have a job, he's in school full time. So we're working on one salary, which is mine, and it's not that much. So I can't really go out to eat. I can't afford stuff. I need things that are inexpensive for me and that I can <coughs> get right away because I also don't have a car to get there, right? So when I go to work in the morning, I'll take two of these guys, and you know how much this can cost? This can really cost less than a dollar because I go to Trader Joe's and I get my bananas for 19 cents. One banana is 19 cents. Do you know how many bananas you can get for $10? 50, and I do that. And I take my backpack and I stuff bananas in there because I need to fill up for the week, right? And I put a little bit of water and I add some spinach and celery because the celery has natural sodium in it and I'm more of a salty person. I love fried rice and chips and that kind of thing. And the celery actually holds me over. If I don't have celery or spinach, I'm craving something salty, like I wanna go get some pad thai or something. But if I have this, I'm good. And it can take me an hour to two hours to finish both of them and at the end my stomach is huge and I'm so full and I'm, but that's good because I'm also not gonna be hungry until I get home at 6 p.m. I'm a personal trainer also and you know at times people want to work out before and after work. So that means I'm up at 5 a.m. and I could be working until 9 p.m. So my days are really long. They're not really conducive to a regular nine to five lifestyle. 